are easier to kind of keep them in sync. Mm -hmm. I got it. Thanks. So, but it, but I guess we should probably try to make that happen next. So week. I guess. Look. Sorry. Go ahead, Sana. Yeah, the the Zoom keeps cutting us off. Um, cool. Well, because we're recording, and because I assume that people will watch this after, um, let's I guess kick off the I think community call number seven now, and. We have a couple cool things to demo um, and also open for any other community demos. Sergey, if there's anything you want to show um, or welcome Koshik. Um, but so I think the things that we wanted to cover in this call off the um, from our side were in um, Identity Wallet and 3ID Connect now, um, you can use it to associate multiple blockchain accounts to the same DID. Um, so you can authenticate that DID using any of your Ethereum wallets currently. Um, we've also been working with Polkadot on a Polkadot integration. Um, and also Joel released uh, yesterday a JS did and or uh, a DAG Jose and EIP 2844 tutorial about how to store signed and encrypted data in IPFS. I think that he can talk about. Um, also, Paul has been working on, um, there's an ongoing IDX and SkyDB hackathon on Gitcoin. I think there's a little bit less than a week left in that. And for that hackathon, Paul put together um, a simple demo on how you can integrate IDX with SkyDB. Um, on Saya, which Paul can demo quickly. Um, I think there's also a new multi queries um, specification, which basically allows you to query multiple, like a path through multiple documents uh, in a single query, which we can chat about. Um, and Yonko has put together uh, a new repo called Clayground, uh, which basically lets you spin up an entire um, the ecosystem of ceramic components locally so you can develop with it more easily. Uh, so I think we can share all of those things and anything else that we want to cover, we can. Um, that makes sense. Koshik, uh, Sergey, anything else you guys would want to talk about or want to cover or share? Hey, Michael, uh, just here to, you know, see some, some of this exact, exciting stuff you guys are building. So just went through the uh, blog post, uh, uh, the Joel posted about the uh, JWS uh, signatures and authentication encryption. So, you know, I just want to learn more stuff if possible through this. Cool. Uh, well, maybe we can start with that then. Joel, do you want to walk through the tutorial and just answer any questions for Koshik? Yeah, and so I think Elias kind of walk through it quickly and then also give some more context on kind of stuff that we've been doing there. Uh, cool. So basically when we started creating ceramic, we were like, okay, we need to have some kind of way of storing signed uh, and possibly encrypted data on IPFS and different people were doing this in different ways like textile was doing it one way or BTB everyone just had random they just like took the signature put it into IPFS and like didn't really think more about it so every type of like encoding was like custom and uh, uh, you had to like you speak their protocol in order to like interpret the data uh, so we're like can we do this better uh, we were using the IDs um, already, which uh, there existed some standards for creating JWTs and like signing data generally with uh, the IDs. So we're like, hmm, maybe we can use that. Um, 
And I, I started thinking about that a bit and then eventually teamed up with uh, Carson from the textile team. And we started like, hey, we can probably make this into a standard for IPFS for signed and encrypted data. And that is what eventually turned into what we now call DAG Jose, which is just a simple kind of IPLD codec that tells IPFS exactly how to uh, interpret this data and, and give you back something that you can like uh, follow up as a DAG. Uh, and together with that effort, we also created EAP 2844, which is uh, kind of like an interface for interacting with DADs through a JSON RPC interface. Uh, so that you can like authenticate to a DAD, you can request a signature and you can request a JWE uh, encrypted object to be decrypted. Um, cool. And yeah, DADs, um, for, uh, I think most people here on the call are probably familiar with that. Uh, but it's uh, a standard from W3C for going from like a short identifier to resolving a document which contains public key material for uh, signature ver verification and key exchange for encryption. Um, all right, so we kind of built the standard itself, specify that, and uh, then we've kind of started implementing a bunch of tooling around that. So we have a library called JSDAD, uh, which we can have a look at. at. Uh, we have um, a system called 380 Connect, which uh, allows us to have provide this EAP uh, twin 844 interface. We also now actually, so this um, JSDAD library uh, allows you to kind of interact with the DAD. So you can like request a signature and you can um, request something to be decrypted. Um, let's see, there's something in the chat. Okay. Uh, all right, so uh, we have Identity Wallet, which is like one of these EAP 2844 providers. We now also has, have um, key DID providers, which are a bit more simple than ID wallets. So uh, that, that basically is like a key pair account that also works with uh, this whole stack of like Dag Jose EIP 2844. Um, if there are any questions on that, I can talk more about that, but um, that's it on a high level. Um, all right, so if we want to store signed data in IPFS, um, what we basically do is we get one of these uh, DID providers. We can get one, as I mentioned before, from 380 Connect. Uh, but also, if we used to look, uh, let's see. in this package, um, this is kind of the simplest uh, DID provider that we basically is like have a seed, which is 32 bytes of entropy. We create a provider, and then we use this DID library that I showed before to create an instance. Now we can like sign objects and we can decrypt objects. So in this tutorial, we kind of go through like how you set this up with, uh, this is using 3 Connect, how you set up IPFS because you need to provide a custom IPLD format. Um, yeah, and basically then you can just start signing things. So here we have kind of a function for adding a signed object. So you have the payload, you sign it, um, and you get back the sign signature and uh, the block which contains the payload. Then you can just like put the signature in IPFS and you put the link block in IPFS. And then you can like retrieve that from IPFS if you use this function. Here with like the world, you can retrieve it. And if you have like multiple signed objects that are kind of linked together, you can traverse like a whole IPLD path uh, without like having to kind of parse the thing and then decode it and then verify the data. All right, so that's kind of it for signatures on a high level. 
And we also provide like a simple function for this, like verifying these uh, JWS signatures. Um, and then we can encrypt um, things in here. We kind of just have a method in the this did, did library. Uh, it's called create bag JWT, which encrypts a tag object uh, to a, an array of the IDs. And then we get like back this JWT encrypted object, which we can put in IPFS. So the cool thing we can do here is I can first add like an encrypted object that says hello secret to uh, this DAD here. But then I can also create another encrypted object. And this encrypted object basically says hello cool, but it also has another property which is, says previous. And there we put uh, the CID of the previous encrypted object. So now we have two encrypted objects, but the new, the, the, the second encrypted object actually, when you decrypt it, it links to the first encrypted object. Um, so we can use like function for like follow secret path, which basically gets a, um, an encrypted object for, from IPFS. It decrypts it. And so obviously if this DID that's authenticated here has uh, permission to decrypt it or like has the key that can decrypt it, it will we'll get back to clear text. And here we kind of just log the clear text. And then if there is a previous pointer in this object, we kind of recursively call the same function on the new or on the previous object. So from the data that we saw we put up, up here, we can see that if we take CAD3, uh, we get a little secret. And if we follow secret path for CAD4, we first get a little cool, then uh, the path for the CAD, then it also logs out a little secret. Um, yeah, so that's kind of it for what we can do with that Jose. And this uh, enables kind of a lot of different types of applications uh, because signed and encrypted data are kind of basic building block for any type of um, authenticated data. And, and that's like very fundamental to like building secure applications in a, in a decentralized uh, fashion. Cool. Um, I think that was pretty helpful. Uh, so actually, uh, I really feel that uh, there's a lot of, uh, you know, good stuff that we can build on top of it because uh, when we worked on a hackathon project, right, so we had to integrate a lot of different wallet functionality just for authentication, you know, signing purpose different. So I guess, you know, we can use a lot of things going forward, just the IDX or, you know, ceramic uh, to even do the encryption, you know, signing and everything through the same. Uh, application. So I have a couple of questions, you know, uh, regarding the uh, linked sign uh, signing of these documents. So what do you think is the best application? Because, you know, one of the things that we need very much need in our, the application that we're building is obviously, you know, the signature concept. Uh, so, but we couldn't figure out ourselves, like, how do we use this uh, as a linked signatures? Uh, so can you give a little quick, uh, you know, example that you really think that we can build on top of it? With the help of the signed documents uh, which are linked basically right i mean so it kind of depends a little bit on exactly what you want to do but this this concept that we showed here with just like basic signed data and ipfs kind of just gives you that like you if you create a signature then you will create a new uh, ipfs object and then you have to like keep track of of the hash of that object the, the cid of that object um so if you're just using that primitive, you have to like uh, keep, keep track of that manually and you have to like decide on like what data structure you wanna use or if you have like multiple signatures and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, but then like if you use ceramic and you create like a ceramic document, then you can make any number of updates to that and every update will be authenticated and signed in, in the background. Um, so in that case, you kind of only need to keep track of the document ID and even however many updates you make, that will still be uh, the same document ID. Okay. Uh, so one application that we are building is currently, you know, uh, having multiple signatures on the same document. Just imagine that there's a file and we are updating, putting a lot of signatures on top of that with the different IDs. 
All right. So if you use the concept of link signing, let's say multiple parties, uh, uh, let's say first party signs on that and pass that document uh, to the other party. And then he signs on top of that link in that particular document. So how does the recovery or the verification process work? Is it, it has to be sequential or, you know, it can be or done by any party at any time. So the verification, that's what uh, was my concern. Yeah, I mean, so one thing you could do if you know the other parties that are gonna be signing uh, the document is basically to uh, create like one master document, which links to a document that each of all of the other users control. Uh, so, and then w whenever kind of uh, each individual user comes and want to sign that that document or like that information, whatever it is, uh, they would just update their own ceramic document. And then there's this master document which points to the document of all users. You're going to have like one uh, overview document which points to the signatures of the different users. That makes sense. Yeah, I guess. So, uh, so basically, we haven't tried the sign part. So probably we'll have to dig more into that and maybe you can get back to it. Uh, and I had one more question regarding the uh, encryption. Uh, so what do you think is the functionality? I mean, we see it as something like, you know, for example, uh, we have used uh, uh, textile mailboxes to you know, exchange symmetry keys uh, when we are you know, uh, actually encrypting a bigger documents, right? So do you think that's where the functionality is basically for key exchange mechanism? Mostly. So for key exchange, I guess, um, I guess, I guess the, the, the textile mailbox can be useful. Uh, if you know, like the DAD of the other user, uh, you can always like resolve the DAD document and get their, uh, uh, their public key. You can do a key exchange. If, yeah. if you kind of are using ceramic as kind of the underlying technology, and the other user kind of has an Ethereum address, you could resolve their DAD if you, if they also like that, if, if they have used some applica or, or applic application before that they have created a DAD. Uh, but, but yeah, again, it kind of depends on um, exactly how you're designing your application. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, because because uh, I, I don't know if, if, if so, so for example, if, you have the first user, right? And then they have a, a mailbox where, like a textile mailbox. How, how does the other user know where to find that? Like, um, right, again, uh, I guess we'll have to maintain something like a you know, public document where we uh, get all the information of all the other users. Uh, I guess it's the same thing goes for even the ceramic documents. Like, how do you identify other DIDs here? So in ceramic, uh, I mean, if you know the like Ethereum address of a user, mm -hmm. or you know the DAD of a user, you can always kind of use that to look up um, their kind of IDX document, which is like oh. okay. a document which the, each user has, which contains like information about different data sets. And then you might like put some information right. there either. So, so the thing is that when we build an application, so we essentially want to keep track of all the people who are in our platform. Uh, not exactly everyone who has a CA, you know, document ID. Uh, so that's something that we have worked on in ThreadDB also. I mean, we use a ThreadDB to keep track of all the people who onboard our system. So we, so when we started using Ceramic, we did the same thing. We just stored all the DIDs of the people in the ThreadDB. So uh, it doesn't make a lot of difference when we switch from mailboxes to even, let's say we use JSTIF for encryption. So I guess it's a quite similar thing, but yeah, so it makes sense. We get a lot of information just with the document ceramic document so we can fetch other details as well right and i guess so this kind of you, you want to have like some index of all of the users of your platform um and that's something we are thinking about like how to do that with ceramic with without you having to do kind of these kind of workarounds mm -hmm. and so one thing we're doing in our anchoring service is to kind of enable different indexing services to look at the anchors of the, a bunch of documents that each, each, um, well, I guess right now is like one hour, but that, that's, uh, to be seen exactly how frequently it anchors, but however, like the, the anchor service will include some information that allows, um, indexing services to kind of index, um, 
different documents from different applications. So in in ones that's like functional, you could in theory have like a um, like a, a metadata information on uh, your the, the the documents which have been created by your application. So you can you can have these indexing services like the graph like get a list of all of the documents that it comes from your application. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that actually makes sense. So yeah, so we hope to see that uh, because I, I guess when we were building on Hackathon, some, uh, that's something that we wanted. So we ended up using, uh, you know, building our own public kind of like a registry uh, using ThreadDB. Right. Cool, thanks a lot. All right, Sena, are you still there? What's, what's up? Yep. Um, so, yeah, thanks for all the good questions, Koshik. And let us know. Just feel free to ping us in Discord as you're going to start modeling. That's, you broke up extremely much, uh, Sana. OK, Zach or Paul. Um, you guys ready for some demos? Yep. Okay, I can go. Zach, uh, Zach, you're up. What are you going to show us? Yep. Let's see. So I'll share my screen. Okay. Um, yeah, so we're going to do a little demo here of 3D Connect. Um, as kind of Joel already talked about it a little bit, this is basically 3D Connect. Um, is basically a managed like DAD provider identity wallet keychain. Um, so we actually host it um, inside an iframe and this kind of interface for, allows the user to, um, you know, authenticate the apps, um, delegate different permissions eventually, uh, do all those kind of actions. Um, so if you're like, if you're using IDX, you're using any other kind of libraries in um, like on the web, you're most likely going to be using 3D Connect um, to get a DAD provider. I said that's kind of interface that's used for um, signing, encryption, et cetera, for all our other libraries. So if you're signing stuff in um, Ceramic or updating docs or doing any of those kind of operations, um, this would be an easy way for a user uh, to authenticate uh, in your app and then use that to interact with Ceramic or IDX or anything. Um, so I'll show the main thing is that we, we used to have this for uh, three boxes as well, but it's been now um, repurposed for Ceramic with new features as well. Um, one of the main things we added recently was support for multiple DIDs and accounts now, um, as well as the ability to um, add and link other blockchain accounts um, and have multiple links. Um, so now you can link, you can have one DID and you could link an Ethereum account, a Polkadot account, um, Bitcoin, et cetera. Um, right now we mostly are supporting Ethereum accounts, um, but it'll be easy to add basically other integrations with any other blockchains or key pairs or anything. Um, and then that would allow you to add those accounts as auth methods here um, and link them as well. Uh, but I have, so I have one account in MetaMask right now. I already connected to this one. So Treebox actually, Thready Connect actually won't ask me anything, I don't think. So let's see. Um, so it's like account I already authenticated. You don't actually even see anything from Thready Connect here. This is just now returning my DID. Um, so it sends some messages to the iframe, basically permissioned uh, this app to allow it to um, you know, sign and encrypt stuff. And this is just like a JWD, for example. But what I'll do now is so you can actually see the flows in 3 Connect is I'll uh, create a new MetaMask account. So you can't see my, or I'll use an account I haven't used with 3 Connect yet. Um, you can't see my MetaMask, but I'm in there right now. So I'm gonna create a new one. Connect it. Okay. Yep, so I have a Ethereum code here and I want to use it with my, um, what I have in 3 Connect, so I'm going to press connect. So now you can see what 3 Connect is actually doing. It's, um, you know, now it's asking the user um, if I want to allow this app to, basically if I want to permission this app um, to, you know, send a signing request to the iframe. Um, and right here is part of the account management now. So now it's asking me if I want to just create a new DID that's linked to this Ethereum account that I'm using, or if I want to link it to any existing accounts or lookup accounts. 
Um, so now we'll see the second part that's been implemented now. So the link. Um, so this is a demo here. Um, the first page would have been like if you were in your own app. Um, now this is basically redirecting me to a way where a place where I can manage my accounts. And this is just a quick demo. Um, basically, our team will you know you build like you build manage these eventually anywhere um, and, and ask the user if they want to allow you to manage your account. Um, but we'll offer a way to do this in the beginning. Um, so this will allow you to you can see here. Um, I could do accounts. Um, so this is basically you know, asking 3D Connect what accounts do I have. So this is showing all the DIDs I have. So I've already created all these accounts in 3D Connect. And if I was going to any app, I could use any one of these DIDs um, to interact with it. Um, I have one DID that actually has two accounts linked. So it's just saying here, I got two Ethereum addresses linked to these accounts. If I was using any one of these accounts in MetaMask, I could authenticate with this as DID. Um, and anyone else could resolve this DID from these um, links as well. Um, but I'm trying to create a new one right now for the address that I have. So I'm actually going to call link. Um, and this is basically asking if I want to link to this. Right now it's just passing, I think, the first DID in the list or the last one. Um, but anyways, it's asking me if I want to link this to account. So to the existing DID that I have, I'm going to say yes. Um, now you can't see my MetaMask, but there's two parts. First, you add it as an authentication method in Ceramic. Um, this just means once you sign messages in the future, you can access the same DID. So if you want to remote, sign the same message, um, you'd be able to authenticate with that. I'm going to sign that. And then right now, next is going to ask me to create an account link. And this is like a publicly verifiable proof um, that links this Ethereum address to this DID. Um, this might take a moment. And what's it doing in the background here, Zach? Yeah, so yeah. At least right now in this part, the account link, like says one is creating, um, let's see, sorry, it's asking me a message. Oh, here we go. So you just had me sign this account link, which creates a new ceramic doc, um, which is a Kype 10 link. So it allows you to look up these links um, to these DIDs. It's also adding basically this account like in IDX um, as a crypto link. Um, so if you were resolved to IDX, you'd also see you know, this part of all these links. Um, and then anyone can verify this proof as well to see for themselves. Um, so it's doing that. And then you'll see it reflected in this local state here. Um, so yeah, in the future, it'll allow me to, like I said, authenticate with that Ethereum address or that any Ethereum provider using that keychain. I think this should, uh... That, that null popped up. Before. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Sorry, that was just really slow. It actually did resolve. Um, so basically the flow was like, yeah, I wanted. I had this new Ethereum account. Um, it went to this account management app, which you know would be an app offered by us or anyone else after. Um, I decided I didn't want to create a new one, but I wanted to actually link this Ethereum account to a DID, not create a new DID. So now I actually linked it. Um, basically brought me back to the app and now asked me if I want to, you know, finally now that I have that account. Um, you know, asked me if I want to allow this app um, to access all those DID calls. Um, so let's continue. Oh, now it failed. <laughs> Um, yeah, it might not resolve completely in the last page. Um, but yeah, this is very much just the piping of it. Um, very much a work in progress still. Um, but this is what it will look like. Let's see if I, it might've created it anyways, Let's see if I can connect with that. So, so basically what you did here is like, you, you have two different MetaMask accounts and then you kind of uh, take one of them that you already have and then link the second one to the first one. So you have like two MetaMask accounts that are kind of connected to the same identity. Yep, exactly. So, and that's the most interesting part because most time people will be using, you know, one or only a handful of DIDs and you'll probably link a lot of accounts across chains or a lot of Ethereum accounts to the same one, um, which wasn't the thing that was possible before. This yeah. is cool. Zach, so when do you expect uh, some of this to be more ready and out of like demo state into more ready to use? Yeah, so um, there's a current release of it, not for like all this multi-account stuff, but you can already use um, to ID connect easily as a DID provider in our libraries. Um, not multi-accounts, but that just has like one DID and allows you to do these same flows. Um, so you can find that here, to ID connect here. Um, has a simple interface. Um, I said right now, 
most people are using it with an Ethereum auth provider. Um, so it allows you to connect, you get a DAD provider here, and that's all you need to do. Then you can pass that to any one of our other libraries. And that's already released here at 3 connect.next. So that's the one that works with ceramic. Um, and then these other features um, will be released periodically, but won't be um, you know, stable maybe for another few weeks. Um, and you can expect to see that. Awesome, thanks. That's, that's super exciting to <laughs> finally be able to link multiple accounts to a single DID. Uh, it's been like a long time coming. I think we've been hypothesizing about this for like a year. So it's awesome to see this working and all sort of publicly resolvable on ceramic, no servers. Um, cool. Uh, I'm looking for, oh, there's Paul. I was like, where's Paul? Um, Paul, do you wanna show us how now we can use uh, an Ethereum account, a DID and IDX to um, act as your user identity system in an application that uses some other peer-to-peer -peer storage technology like SkyDB? Yeah, I can try to demo it, um, but it seems, uh... Gateway is rather slow, so I'm not sure it's going to work. OK, um, so you should be able to see my screen. So it's very uh, similar setup. Uh, we'll need to authenticate with um, IDX. Uh, well, with 3 Connect. So I'm, I'm already authenticated here to speed up things a bit. Um, so it's going to. Um, create uh, the dedicated IDX setup, uh, actually the definition here, um, in order to store uh, the encrypted key that we're gonna use uh, for SkyDB. So to, to generate um, a SkyDB um, encrypted data, we, we need to provide a seed. And so it's gonna be generated here in the client but stored using IDX, which is going to allow us to uh, access the data again afterwards. Um, OK, so it seems it's done now. So uh, yeah, here we can start creating a key pair. Um, so it's going to not only create it, but also store it in IDX, if it doesn't take too long. And this is just our gateway running a bit slowly right now as we need to fix that. Yeah, yeah. Um, let me show the code maybe in the meantime. So essentially the way it's working, um, is that we're just creating a schema uh, as it's done here. So this is very simple. It's only describing that it contains an object. So there is not much validation or anything. Um, but that allow us to create a definition uh, using this schema uh, that can then be used to interact with IDX. Uh, so here is a create key pair uh, function that um, I was just calling from, from uh, the demo, uh, that is creating the seed, um, I mean, getting the seed as input, creating the JWE, so encrypting the seed using the DID, and storing it uh, using, using IDX, so using the definition that is being created before, and then returning the key pair um, used by SkyDB. So let's see. OK, now we have it. Um, and now, so we got the private and public key. And we can use it to um, interact with uh, SkyDB directly. So here, I'm um, using the SkyDB SDK. And it should tell me, OK, that's fine. Okay, that's, that's good. Um, so, 
So let's see where we are. Okay. And then we can again uh, get back the data from uh, SkyDB. Okay, so we get this data here. Um, and so if, if we were to get back to this page uh, after quitting the browser or just this tab or anything, uh, we can recover this key pair uh, by being authenticated with our uh, with again and reusing our IDX document. Uh, and so just loading it, we can recover it from, from IDX. Um, and I think we can see actually, um, so this is a definition we have. And if we just get it from IDX, uh, And we can see what we have here is uh, the JWE content. So it's um, the way it's stored if on Ceramic using IDX is really just the encrypted payload. And only the DID uh, that it was encrypted with can uh, decrypt the content to generate the key pair. Uh, and I think that's it. Um, so I can show here. Uh, so as I was saying, loading the key pair here, it's just about trying to get uh, the encrypted payload from IDX and uh, decrypting it using the DID as was shown by Joel before, and then generating again the key pair using the seed. So from there, we can interact with uh, SkyDB again. Any question? No, very nice. And coming soon is a similar demo on how you can do that with textile. But basically, like this model of using IDX uh, and DIDs along with users' existing Ethereum wallets and other blockchain wallets um, allows the nice integration of these systems, right? So, any system that uses some kind of a key to authenticate updates or information within that context. So like a textile threads DB has its own key pair, like I think ED25519 or something, and SkyDB has their own key pair. And so the way that these things integrate is basically just generate that key pair or that seed and encrypt it with the DID. And so every time the user authenticates, they can decrypt it and then authenticate within those other contexts using that encrypted key pair. Um, which is nice because it, it demonstrates the power of IDX as uh, a flexible cross-platform identity system. So you can imagine some apps are storing data in SkyDB, some apps are storing data in textile, some apps are storing data in ceramic documents, some on Filecoin or whatever. And no matter which data backend technology application developers are choosing to use for their own app, um, IDX serves as this single integration point for the user, um, which is nice. Data then becomes portable to applications regardless of which storage tech they're using. Um, yeah, and there's, like I said, there's a couple days left in the SkyDB hackathon. So it'd be interesting to see what people are coming up with using this model. Um, all right, so we have like 15 minutes left. Maybe we can um, zoom through some of the last things we wanted to share updates on. Um, Yanko, is there anything that you want to quickly discuss uh, or share about Clayground? Um, yeah, we can just briefly go through the uh, docs. Um, I'll, uh, yeah, I'll just share the screen. Uh, can you see my screen? Yep, all good. Yeah, so I will not uh, demo it because uh, it's a, we should just um, use the Docker Compose and to um, bootstrap the, the whole uh, ecosystem uh, locally. 
Uh, I'm just gonna briefly go through the components that we have in Playground. So Playground, it's a playground for ceramic. Um, and we have a couple of components here. Um, so IPFS, that's uh, just IPFS uh, ceramic. Um, we are using uh, this repo um, to instantiate IPFS instance with the Jose codec enabled. We use Ganesh as a local Ethereum blockchain. Uh, CAS, that's our implementation of the ceramic anchoring service. And of course, just ceramic, the TypeScript ceramic implementation. Um, as for the prerequisites, um, just Docker and Docker Compose, uh, as well as uh, Node, um, I believe uh, the latest version of 12 and um, above. Um, I will uh, change this um, in docs um, in TypeScript. So in order to run it, uh, you can just use Docker Compose up or run it in a, um, as a daemon um, in yeah, different ways. So um, if you, uh, I'm just gonna go briefly to the Docker Compose so we can see the IPFS component here, Ganesh, uh, CAS, uh, not the anchoring service. And of course, everything here is configurable and just ceramic that runs as a daemon. In order to um, change uh, those uh, values, uh, you just need to update .env file. Uh, by default, um, as a, CAS is using the local SQL, uh, SQLite uh, database. Um, and when you bootstrap all the components, uh, when you uh, uh, successfully run them, um, you just need to, uh, there are some uh, utility scripts like build ceramic uh, that will build ceramic from the source um, that you're using here as a dependency. And you can just um, use ceramic um, with this utility script, but again, you can always install ceramic, um, the matching version of ceramic using the NPM. Um, as a storage, uh, you can just data uh, is uh, folder is used for mapping all the um, component storage. And of course, there's a utility script for removing it and destroying all the containers and images uh, from this repo. So uh, this is just a brief introduction. Feel free to uh, play with it, to play with it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's it. Any questions? Yeah, will I be able to use this in production or like just for development? Uh, yeah, that's a that's a good question. Uh, it really depends um, what uh, it definitely it can be used in the production, but uh, like this out of the box, um, I believe so. Uh, I believe that we will provide uh, more instructions how to uh, what what uh, what to use for production but the, the thing is all the components here can be used for production of course except uh, Ganesh uh, and uh, the CAS but you can run the CAS as well but you need to publish it does it make sense right so you would like change some configuration in here and basically have the the CAS, uh, the anchor service, can kind of point to a real Ethereum node. Yep, uh, and ex we can just, uh, so in the section for the ceramic anchoring service, um, there's a blockchain connector. We use Ethereum um, for now. Um, and uh, by default, the, the network is Ganesh, but it can be Robston or Homestead, I think the main app. Um, and you can just play uh, with all, and of course, this is, uh, since it's Ganesh, you can see the private key uh, in plain, um, but of course, this, this private key is just 
would be nice. And uh, yeah, um, you don't need to use SQLite. You can point to Postgres as uh, we are using um, in production. Um, and yeah, more or less everything can be changed here. Uh, any more questions? No, there. Wait to see a tutorial. Big talk. Oh, so, oh, sorry, Michael. Uh, you just dropped a bit. Uh, yeah, I said I can't wait to see a tutorial on this and completed docs. Yep, definitely. Uh, that's plan for this print. All right. What did uh did I miss anything so far? Um, I see James is rejoining. Um, did I miss anything that I said we wanted to demo? Maybe Joel to quickly chat about the multi queries. So um, how you can query through multiple documents along a path on ceramic. Yeah, I mean, I can give a quick um, overview of that. So basically, until now, you kind of have in ceramic, you, you kind of have to like get one document and then get the next document and like get each document individually. And one thing that we've been thinking uh, basically since we started creating ceramic is that it will be really powerful if you can have documents and then like add links from one document to another. And so you can like have these graphs of documents. Um, and essentially we kind of, um, realized that we needed like a way to get using like get one document see if there is a link then get the other document so like it's the way to kind of get multiple documents at once um, so we basically made a specification that uh, allows you to query multiple documents like this uh, so that there's like two parts to that one is kind of the use the api interface that you use um, uh, on as a developer uh, on when you're like interacting with ceramic and the other part is kind of the lower level um, gossip mechanism for like syncing documents in the protocol and so I'm mostly just going to show uh, the um, uh, the API but I can give like a quick um, also general idea of the gossip protocol and how that would work but basically here, uh, the API is uh, load link documents. And you basically pass the document ID of the base document that you wanna uh, sync. And then you pass an array of paths. So um, for example, if you have document A, it links to document B and document A has a property that says like cool link. And that's actually where the, the document ID of document B is put into document A. So then you could use to call ceramic dot load documents, the document ID of document A, and then slash cool link. And this would basically just return uh, the state of both of these documents at the same time. So, um, uh, basically a map from document IDs to the um, well, content. This should probably say instance here, but yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah, and that's essentially it, like how you would use this. Um, we're also kind of doing this so it works over the HTTP client and daemon, uh, but there isn't like too much to that. It's just like the same type of thing, but using HTTP. And kind of on a lower level, uh, this is kind of going to be very quickly, but um, you, the Ceramic uses a PubSub system to gossip about updates and make queries for what the latest state of a document is. And um, so you usually like make a query that contains the document ID. And um, now we introduced like an ability to include a path property, which is basically just the same as here. So any node that has this document that has been queried and also has the other documents can just return and say like, hey, I know that this is document has this tip and this other document that is linked has this other tip. So you can kind of 
sync multiple documents in parallel. Um, yeah, and I, I won't go too much into detail here because there's like a lot of extra information for about how this works. And like, I think you kind of need a fairly in-depth understanding of like how the pub subsystem in ceramic works as well, but happy to dive in if anyone has specific questions. Yeah, a question just on like performance of this, right? So the this improves dev experience because instead of needing to like one off query a document, then parse its contents and then look for the doc ID of the content you want, then go query that document and load it. Trying to do that instead of doing that sequentially, you can parallelize it. So do you have any idea of what this would give us in terms of a performance improvement or like uh, how this would work if like maybe for example a node has one of the documents but not both of the documents like what are some of those edge cases yeah i mean so you, just the first thing that we're implementing is just the kind of basic uh, api in ceramic and that won't give like too much speed improvements it will just be like a convenience interface for like syncing multiple documents once we implement the kind of lower level pub sub system that would allow us to if you say like you have you want to sync one document that links to two other documents, then instead of like syncing the first document, then syncing the second document, and syncing the third one, you can like sync all of them in parallel, which which will increase the speed. You know, could depending on like the circumstances that you know, increase it quite significantly, um, because you don't need to like wait for the first document to be synced. Uh, but of course, that only works if this other node has the, the document, the first document that you're looking for also has the other document. So if, if these documents are hosted individually on different nodes, then you would get kind of the same um, performance as without this protocol. So, so it kind of like imp improves the speed in the optimistic case, uh, which in many cases is going to be the, the, the case that linked documents are, are actually on, on same or similar nodes. Uh, but you might also like have, one, if you have like one document that links to two documents, there might be one node that has the link to like one of them, the other node has the, the document the link to another one, and then you can like combine those and get kind of the, the same uh, performance benefits. Um, yeah, there's, there's kind of, as you alluded to, uh, a few edge cases here that, needs to be taken into consideration. Cool. Um, any questions from anyone here, James, Christian, about anything we covered? Uh, no, I, I, this is great. Um, I'm just uh, excited to, to see how far you guys have come along and I'm hoping to to use this for uh, our product um, uh, soon. So just trying to understand. Uh, I guess the question would be then, um, you know, uh, when when can we uh, use this? Uh, I guess in production specifically, all the um, IDX work. Yep. Um, so we, as a team, are trying to right now get to a place where we're going to feature freeze ceramic so we can move to all the optimizations and testing that need to happen before um, a big release. Um, so the feature freeze should happen soon. Once that happens, you know, we'll sort of officially introduce the, the clay test net, um, which will persist for some amount of time, I think. Um, and then once we feel pretty good about that, maybe towards, um, the end of the year, then uh, maybe a bit right into the new year, but then we'll hope to sort of have a soft launch of the main net where we're, you know, working with a specific set of partners to like test out the main net, like before we broadly release it. And then sometime after that, um, we'll do like a full main net release, but the main net, so to say, will be available before the broad release um, in some capacity. So, you know, for example, for you guys, I think we'd probably want to try to onboard you to the the soft main that launch before then. So I would say, you know, sometime earlier in the new year, you should be able to use it in production. That would be great. That's fantastic. Thank you. Yep.
All right. Um, any other questions? Anyone? Anyone else have anything to share? Um, and Christian, I saw your note. Yeah, I can. I can hang on at the end. I'll stop recording. Yeah, and then we can I don't want to back down the, the question, uh, the discussion here with my fundamental questions, unless other people are interested in discussing these. There, more high level on the fundamental definition level. Okay. Yeah, I'm happy to to hang on with you. I'll just stop recording. Um, all right, everyone. Thanks for joining. Uh, I'll publish this up to YouTube and on the blog as soon as the, the recording saves. Thanks, all. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Bye.